Hey everybody, this is Brent Central Arkansas. How you doing? Uh, today's topic is flow to waste. It's a hydroponic method that I have begun using since I put in the no weed garden. I didn't know it was called at first. It just kind of evolved and then after doing research later I found out that the technique is called flow to waste. It's going to begin here in my front yard and let me take you along and show you what I'm doing. You could see the edge of my greenhouse over there and um, I'm showing you that because it's just a short walk or short avenue for the hose over to that little orbit um, automatic water right there. So over here at my little orbit water, auto water, I am going to explain to you how I do what I do now with hydroponics. It is called flow to waste and it's not terribly uncommon but it's real easy especially for the beginner and I will show everything I go through and why I'm liking this and how I got to this point as well. But the first thing I needed was a constant supply of water and I'm pulling from the house spigot there and I'm using this um, Orbit auto waterer and you, I'll go through it real quick. It's super simple. You set the clock time. Once you do that, you set the start time. I have it at 8 o'clock a.m. And then it's then you set the how long you want to do it. And I have it on for 12 minutes. And then how often you want to water. And I have it every 12 hours. So what that equates to is twice a day or every 12 hours, I get 12 minutes of house water turned on. Now I can turn it off, auto, or I can hit the manual button here to add. See, I'll show that real quick. This is hitting it, and you can adjust the minutes up and down. And right now it's set for 10. You hear it click on. So I'm going to put 10 extra minutes in water <laughs> just because of this demonstration. I could turn it off. But anyway, um, let's go around. Let me show you the rest of what's going on. Now this hose goes over into the greenhouse. So here's the hose coming in, it comes over, up, you can hear it running for we just turned it on, and it's going into the top of the storage barrels. Now that is five 55 gallon barrels, they're all plumbed together underneath here. If you've watched my videos, you've seen this many, many times, I've done it almost since the very beginning of doing any kind of container gardening, but that is pumping into the top of the barrels. Now I've put this shade cloth over the top of the barrels to help um, keep some of the heat off of it and provide, well, shade to keep it cooler. And I've got some washers that are affixed and this is an indicator of level. When it comes all the way down to the bottom, that means it's full. When it goes all the way to the top, that means it's empty. I hope this picks up pretty good. It's kind of late, early evening, late afternoon. But this is coming from the barrels and it's got an on and off valve here. And over here you see a Y hose uh, adapter. It goes to two drip lines and I'll show you where those drip lines go. It also goes to a feed line. And that's for when I need to use um, the water for some other reason. So coming around you can see uh, this one here has a valve. It's off right now and it comes down and I use this just to fill up my watering bucket, watering can, um, used to mix nutrient. I'll show you that in a bit. Now the two drip lines here, oh, let's see here, there we go. They can be shut off individually using either one of these two <coughs> valves on the hose Y adapter. And one of them goes inside this bucket there and it's operated by a valve so when it, the storage barrels when this is empty when it pumps out to the plant the storage barrels drip in here till it comes back to level again now inside this barrel there's a pump and um, let me see let me take this off here let me show you you can see it down there yeah 
There's also two air stones that keeps the uh, water aerated and it also helps, believe it or not, keep this liquid significantly cooler than the storage barrels above. And so I'm a big uh, fan of air keeping it aerated. So uh, you see that pump down there. That pump operates, comes out here and comes back around up to here and it feeds everything in the greenhouse. All of these are fed through the main line here. They go into here and I can shut the valve on and off to moderate how much flow I want into each piece each platform then they flow down into the gutters through the buckets into the gutters every one of them and then they return back into this pipe here and then it flows all the way back down so now you can see you can even hear that the water coming in comes down and it drips into uh, I should call this the waste tank now um, it used to be the nutrient tank that pumped out to the entire greenhouse and the nutrients have come back and they recirculate and this was the top off valve from the storage barrels above and that held all the nutrient all the storage barrels above but now when I put the no weed garden in I wanted to add the waste runoff from the first dripping through the buckets inside the greenhouse have it return into here and then have it pump out to the Noe garden which is outside you can take a look at those videos if you want to see how that is set up but essentially it's the same as inside the greenhouse except there's no return gutters they sit straight on the ground and any excess that goes through the pots go into the ground uh, so that is this this is the waste I will call that the waste tank now and it is any that drip and you can see it's not a whole lot of dripping it drips some but you have to fine tune the, the um, flow to waste system so that you're not wasting all that nutrient that, you're, that you've uh, mixed and therefore money. Okay, let's do a quick recap since that was a lot. I've got an automatic watering coming from the household water pumped up through here on a timer. That, all that is 250 gallons of stored water. It's nothing but water. It flows from the connector here to both this one and this one, the waste valve and the feed tank, through a float valve. And when it gets to a certain level, the float valve turns it off. So you may be wondering, if this is nothing but water, how are the plants getting the nutrients? Well, I'm going to show you that part next. And here's the answer. This is a 65 gallon tank that I bought from TSE probably, well, a really long time ago. I was using it for RV purposes, but I'm repurposing it. And uh, this tank that is going to hold the concentrated nutrient in the RV pump there is going to pump it via hose back up to mix with the barrel I just showed you 55 gallon drum now this doesn't have to be a tank this can be a 55 gallon drum sitting right next to the one that I just showed you and you can also use a hydroponic pump instead of the the uh, the RV pump I'm using now this is temporary I do have a hydroponic pump that's coming in it should be in tomorrow and I'll redo this just slightly but it's still gonna sit on the end down here at the other end of the greenhouse because I don't have room at the other end where the tank is so let me show you how I mix the nutrient now this is just one of the buckets that I grow everything in the greenhouse in. you can see I mentioned this before this is my fill bucket that fills from the storage um, fill hose that fills from the storage tanks above so let me turn it on now when it gets to about right here I will stop and go to the mixing table and here's my bucket measured to the amount I need for water I also have my dwelt drill with the mixing bit on here bought that bit at Amazon 
it was really long so I cut it back some and uh, filed it down so it'd fit and fit real easily. As you mix this stuff, sometimes there's particles and sometimes uh, other debris when you just coming out of the water. So I have this screen thing that I screened. Uh, <laughs> I have this screen thing <laughs> that I use to remove debris. So here are the salts, or if you prefer, chemical fertilizer, or if you prefer, nutrients. It's the complete formula to feed the plants everything they need. And I mean everything they need. It does, you do not need anything else. Doesn't matter what people tell you. Doesn't matter what you hear. If you're growing hydroponically, this is all you need. So let's look at it from left to right. And that's the way you got to mix these. The first is Master Blend. I get Master Blend and Calcium Nitrate from Morgan County Seeds in Missouri, I believe. And they ship them to me. But Master Blend is micronutrients, some other nutrients. It's more or less the main base of the whole thing and that's what you add first. Then, after that's well mixed, then you add magnesium sulfate, otherwise known as MGSO4, or layman's terms, Epsom salt. I get it from Walmart epsom salt in the pharmacy area of walmart and last is calcium nitrate this is calcium uh, with nitrate mixed uh, nitrate nitrogen through nitrate also known as nitrate all mixed in so this has all your calcium and all your nitrogen needs so how do you mix these right you need to know the quantities right so i've got little cups here and i measured if you've ever watched uh, any of the other YouTubers who mix this stuff, Master Blend is mixed at 12 grams, calcium nitrate at 12 grams, and Epsom salt at, and 6 grams for every 5 gallons. So you got one, one and half when you mix it. Now I put these, I use these little cups here and I measured out 12 grams for five gallons times five so i'll have 25 gallon mix every time i fill it up to this line so that was what 60 grams 60 grams of uh well, i'll just put it in there of master blend 60 grams of calcium nitrate and 30 grams of epsom salt the most important thing to consider here though is that let me get that other cup Anyway, back to what I was saying, the most important thing to do is mix each piece thoroughly. You put the master blend in there first, you mix it thoroughly before you put the Epsom salt in there, and then you have the two and you mix them thoroughly. Then you add the calcium nitrate and you mix it thoroughly. Now, some folks are having um, nutrient dropout, I guess, uh, some particles left over. And that is because either they didn't mix it in the correct order or um, they didn't mix it thoroughly. I'm not sure which is the case, but all this is based on my experience. I've done everything wrong, so what I'm telling you is the truth. So I've taken three of these measurements and put them in here. Now, if you remember what I said, this mark is for 25 gallons. So this is 75 gallons worth of concentrate master blend only. Now we're going to mix this thoroughly. That's it thoroughly enough. <laughs> anyway, I'll bring you back. I'll let it go for about 30 seconds. Next, I take Epsom salt and I add it to the master blend. Doesn't have to be exact, exact, as long as it's pretty close. That's two. So we're mixing for 75 gallons. And three. Roughly good enough. And now we're going to mix this thoroughly together. I'll bring it back in the top. And last, we add three calcium nitrate. Now the calcium nitrate, even though it's 12 grams, just like Master Blend, it takes 
a little, uh, the line is a little higher because 12 grams of uh, one substance isn't the exact same level as 12 grams of something else. So let me mix that and I'll bring you back. I thought I'd show you on these cups. By the way, these are mouthwash cups. Just something you use in oral hygiene. Rinse your mouth out. See how the calcium nitrate line is lower than the master blend? I, uh, I obviously is because the master blend, uh, the calcium nitrate is more dense. It's heavier. And this is it fully mixed. There are lots of teeny little bubbles in there right now because I mixed the Dickens out of it. And there's even floating debris. I've found that a lot of times there's, I don't know what, the stuff, little floating particles of whatever, maybe pieces of bucket or something uh, in there. So I just screen it out. So you can see the tank already is filled with house water up to a certain point. And each one of these buckets that I'm mis mixing is about three and a half to four gallons. The hole is small, which is why I used one of the uh, containers that I use to grow things in the greenhouse. And here's why. You can take one of these buckets and you can bend it to a small area so it pours easily in that small lid. Now it's the first one's been poured in and you can see in there there is a bubbler in there and that is mixing. I don't even have to mix it actually. I'm going to when I get done but it, I don't have to. The air bubbles will keep it mixed. Now I've did one bucket full to add to this tank and I'm going to do it three more times to make a super concentrate. <laughs> 